Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and today's video is gonna be a continuation of the last video where we're gonna focus on this, honestly, controversial idea of speed at an instant. So in the last video, we were talking about a, a sprinter doing a 100 meter dash, and we were trying to express his speed at different moments in time or over larger intervals of time. So in theory, here's what we were doing. We were saying, hey, we wanna know how fast was the runner running, say, at that moment in time. We identified that moment in time as T sub one. Now, in order to uh, determine a speed, we have to know something about how far he ran over some change in time. So let's say we wanna move over a distance in time that we're gonna call H. And at that moment in time, we're now T sub one plus some amount of time h. That h could be really small, like one one ten thousandth of a second, or it could be 10 seconds, whatever you're trying to communicate. But the idea is this, in that change in time, his distance also changed. So at t sub one, we would say, at time sub one, the ordered pair would be the time sub one, and then the function evaluated at time sub one. And then at time t1 plus h, we would insert that into the function and determine where was the runner at that time, f of t1 plus h. Then to determine how far he ran, this distance right here, to determine that distance, we took that f of t1 plus h and subtracted f of t1 and that told us how much distance he traveled in that moment in time. And we said we could just leave it at that, but it's awkward to say meters per one-tenth of a second or meters per 10 seconds. So we did a proportional scaling, and that scaling can be just quickly and easily addressed by dividing by that factor or that, uh, that change in time h. Now, this is where it gets a little controversial and crazy historically is to really measure speed at an instant, we want that change in time to be infinitesimally small. And the way we communicate infinitesimally small is we say, allow h to approach zero. Take the limit as h approaches zero. And it's sort of this idea, h isn't a set quantity, h is this idea of, we're gonna allow the change in time to shrink and get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And when we do that, this idea here was called several things historically. Isaac Newton called it the fluxion. And I think it was coming from the word flux, fluctuate change. We don't really call it that much anymore. We now call it a derivative or we call it the instantaneous rate of change. Now, not everything in real life is a sprinter running 100 meters. <laughs> Sometimes functions can be used to model just about anything in terms of real world phenomena. And so in general, if you had any function modeling anything that you would want to desire, and you wanted to know by how much was that function changing, that quantity changing at a moment in time, say this moment here, we would think, well, at that moment, the input quantity is x, whatever that might be. To determine the rate of change at that moment, the instantaneous rate of change, we're gonna adjust that x by just a little bit, a smidge. Sometimes we say, find the change in x. The Greek letter delta, there the triangle, represents the idea of change. So change x by, theoretically, a little tiny amount, we can get that instantaneous rate of change. In that small change in x, my function changed a little bit as well. So let's look at those two points again. This first point is the point x, comma, and then whatever x was, we would substitute it into the function to determine the output quantity, and we would say it's f of x. We adjust x by a little bit, and that new location is the original x plus that change in x. And so the new point is that original x plus that change in x. And if that's the input, the output quantity would be 
f of x plus delta x. Now what we really want to know is, in that change in x, the function changed by some amount, and deter to determine that amount of change, we'll subtract the output quantity from here, subtract the output quantity from here, will give us that change in the function value. So we'll say take f of x plus delta x, and subtract f of x. And then again, remember like in our sprinter case, it was a per 10 seconds, or per two seconds, or per one tenth of a second, and, but we wanna scale it to be a factor of per one, and so we'll have to divide by that change in x. Then, the controversial part, to truly get it to be instantaneous, we allow that change in x to be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's like a thinking process. We're imagining delta x shrinking, getting closer and closer to zero. We take the limit as delta x approaches zero. And this is called the limit definition of instantaneous rate of change of the derivative. And we have some symbols for it. We could call this f prime of x. Or we could say this numerator is giving us the change in the function value, while the denominator is giving us the change in that input quantity x. And so these are just different symbols that you'll see for how to measure an instantaneous rate of change, a derivative, the speed at an instant, whatever the context might be.